So determining flood risk is a difficult problem. It's not so bad if you have the opportunity to stand in one place and watch the floodwaters come and go. This particular site where I'm standing right here, just a week ago, was completely underwater. And it looks something like this. Most of us don't have the luxury of standing in one place and watching the floodwaters come and go to determine flood risk. As a result, you need to be able to access other types of resources that will give you some sense of the long-term flood risk of a piece of property. And that's what I want to do with this video. I want to show you how to specifically access flood maps and other types of resources that will tell you about long-term flood risks tell you about future flood risks. All of these resources are free and can be accessed from the comfort of your home. First, a little codeology. FEMA uses codes to identify flood risk. Your highest risks associated with A's or V's. Typically, you'll see something labeled AE as very high risk. Zone X can be shaded. That indicates a moderate risk. Zone X can be unshaded, that represents minimal risk. So learn the codes and let's move on. One of the first flood hazard resources that I want to show you is something called the National Flood Hazard Layer. And so what we're going to do is I'm going to, uh, I'm going to walk you through how to uh, put your hands on, a, uh, on this resource and then how to generate a flood map. So. Type in National Flood Hazard Layer in Google, and you should get this link right here at the top. Go ahead and click on that, and it'll take you to the FEMA page. Scroll down a little bit, and you'll see two choices, one of which is this Map Service Center, and the other of which is this NFHL ArcGIS Viewer. I don't recommend that you go here because the maps in that particular uh, process are out of date. They lack detail. This is the one I think that FEMA has been putting a lot of effort in to make it better and easier to access. And so go ahead and click on the NFHL viewer. And what I want to say right off the bat is accessing these flood maps is a process of patience. It requires patience because there's a lot of information on these maps if you're using a home computer with Wi-Fi, it's going to take a while for everything to load. So click and then wait. Click and then wait. Let's get rid of this by hitting OK. And we're lucky today because it looks like uh, we're seeing um, the United States and the places in red are the places where the flood hazard has been digitally mapped. We can go over here and we can click on the plus to zoom in or we can double click to zoom in and sometimes when you zoom in there's a waiting process you see this little wait button here that simply tells you that uh, it's uh, it's processing the information again lots of information in these maps so simply have patience and wait for it to load all right this is looking pretty good first off the bat um, coastal South Carolina along here um, some of these coastal counties um, have not been digitally flood mapped. I don't fully understand that because there's a lot of flood hazard there, but we're not going to worry about that because uh, subsequent uh, resources I uh, give you will uh, show you how to get around that. So let's go up here to this box and let's type in an address. I'm going to uh, take you to a place where I actually looked at some property to buy. And it's uh, going to be Dura Road. South Carolina near Alwanda, and I'm going to click on it, and then once again, I'm going to wait. We're doing really good today. Uh, my uh, my uh, Wi-Fi seems to be uh, on the ball. All right. So uh, if I uh, go over here and click on a little a little bit uh, um, less of a view, I'm going to wait for it to load. Um, and you should start to see some of these flood zones materialize if indeed there are flood zones 
in the property uh, or near the property that you're interested in. Um, and uh, let me uh, let me look at a few things here. Um, just uh, give you uh, give you some uh, information to orient you what's going on. Um, I'll wait for this to load. All right, I think we're there. Um, blue area zone AE, as I showed you earlier, this is a special um, risk flood zone. Um, this is an area where if you were going to have something there like a, a building or a house, um, you'd be required to have flood insurance. You probably wouldn't because it's a waterway, it's a floodplain, high flood frequency there. Um, adjacent to that zone AE is this brown shaded area. That's what uh, is known as shaded zone X. It has less flood risk than out over here in this zone AE, but still, um, some flood risk and uh, usually what we find of course is that the shaded zone X's are adjacent to these zone AE's. Um, you can envision this as kind of the transition zone between high flood risk and low flood risk and of course uh, this could change if indeed climate change gives us uh, greater uh, chances of flood this could have uh, could convert to zone AE at some time in the future. Some other things to look at. Look at this little tongue in here. This, of course, represents a uh, an area of lower elevation, and so the flood risk is higher in this little tongue of, of lower elevation. So high risk in the blue, lower flood risk here in the shaded brown, and then minimal flood risk out here in this unshaded zone X. Now, let's go ahead and generate a flood map. Um, let's say we're interested in uh, this spot right here. So if I left click one left click right there and then wait for it to catch up. Now we're good. And then go over here to these three dots, left click there and click on add a marker. That theoretically might be the property you're interested in buying. Left click on that marker, wait again for the system to catch up. Continue to wait, patience, remember. Now it's done. Now we're going to go over here and we're going to uh, click on set as input of NFHL print tool. That looks good. And now to come over here to this box and click on run. And wait again. What's happening now is it's taking a subset of this larger flood map and it's going to generate um, a smaller flood map that's now available at this output file right here. If you left click on this, we should go to the PDF document that shows you that area. You can, of course, take this PDF document, you can save it, you can print it, you can look at all sorts of interesting um, flood hazard information associated with that map, and now you know how to generate your own flood hazard map. Now, if we remember the national flood hazard layer had some counties that weren't digitally mapped. And what I want to do now is to show you what you might be able to do if you live in a county where they've gone ahead and produced digital maps. I live in Ori County, and indeed the county government in Ori took those flood maps and they digitize them themselves and I can access them and they're really good maps. Let me show you how to do that. Typing in uh, Ori County Flood Zone FEMA and I'm going to go down here where it says FEMA Flood Zones and notice right off the bat uh, what pops up is a uh, is a map 
and then almost instantaneously um, some colored uh, flood zones. Um, this particular uh, process done by Horry County government is almost better than the, uh, the FEMA flood process that we looked at earlier. I can zoom in simply by uh, scrolling. I can find flood zones. This, uh, this dark pink here represents the AE flood zones. Um, the lighter pink, once again, the shaded zone X. And notice the detail on these maps. Um, you, can, uh, you can look at uh, small secondary roads and you can determine exactly where the flood zone is relative to, uh, relative to property. It actually shows property parcels. So this is a very good flood mapping process available in Horry County, and it might also be available in some of these other coastal counties. One of the final resources that I want to talk about very quickly um, is a website um, and it's called Flood Factor. Um, this is a really cool website. Um, it's a, produced by a nonprofit organization that's committed to making um, information about floods more accessible and easier to understand by the general public. And as you can see from some of the previous things we've looked at, it's, a, it's kind of a slog to get through this stuff. Um, the Flood Factor website attempts to uh, uh, sort through all this to uh, make it simpler to understand and most importantly um, they've tried to address the issue of how flood risk might change with climate change so uh, let's uh, let's look at this flood factor website here we are at the flood factor website it's very simple to use I'm going to uh, simply enter that same address um, that we looked at earlier there's our door road in Allendale. Um, it's going. To, there's our property that we looked at earlier. Um, notice that uh, the map looks just about the same. Um, you can uh, um, scroll around here. Um, it gives you um, sort of a pared down flood factor score for that particular uh, property. Um, it uh, talks about flood factors across the area. It talks about uh, potential damage that can happen to your house. Um, this map, there's a little bigger map, should look familiar because uh, here was our AE flood zone that we looked at earlier. Here was the pin placement that I put on that earlier FEMA flood map. Um, and then they also talk about, of course, the uh, how uh, uh, flood risk can, uh, can change as a result of changing climate. All in all, this flood factor website is uh, something you should definitely look at uh, because it's a, it's a great resource and it sort of very much simplifies the process of trying to understand flood risk on a piece of property. Determining flood risk is a difficult problem. I'm not going to try to make it sound like it's easy and of course there's all sorts of variables involved. One could take a piece of property that's flood prone and simply fill in 10 or 12 feet of dirt, flood problem gone. And so that's one approach that's often done as far as subdivisions are concerned. The other big problem of course is climate change. We simply do not know how flooding will change in the future, but all the scientific evidence tends to suggest that flooding is going to become more frequent and more severe in the future. So now you have the tools for accessing flood hazard maps and other types of resources, but the final piece of this flood puzzle has to do with wetlands and being able to determine if indeed there are wetlands on a piece of property. And that's what a subsequent video will do. It will show you how to go onto a piece of property, look for signs of wetlands with the vegetation, with the soils and the hydrology, and then determine if there are wetlands on the site.